How can you use body language that makes you look like a leader? How can you enhance your leadership presence with the right body language? Body language is a topic I am really passionate about and I am very, very excited to share this video with you. We're going to talk about seven body language gestures that you can use to appear more like a leader. I'm going to use lots of images and lots of examples in this video so you can really understand what I'm talking about. Before we get into those tips though, we need to talk about why is body language so important? So every time you communicate, your communication comes from two channels, from your verbal channel and your non-verbal channel. Your verbal channel is important in your communication, but your non-verbal channel that you use, which includes your body language, as well as other things I'll talk about in a moment, your non-verbal channel counts for much more of the message that you send. So in your overall communication, your body language is a lot more important than the actual words that you use. And studies have shown this. The particular study that I wanna share with you was done in the 1960s by Albert Morabian. You may be familiar with this study. Uh, you may have come across it in your own research or your own reading of articles. But basically what he said is that when you communicate, 93% percent of your communication is your nonverbal communication. 93% of what you communicate is what you communicate non-verbally. And only 7% of what you communicate is the words that you use. This is basically how much when you have somebody listening to you, it's basically how they interpret your message. Now, when he talks about 93% of your communication being your non-verbal communication, it doesn't only mean body language. So body language is a part of that, but it also means the tone of voice that you use, the speed at which you speak, your pronunciation. So everything but the words that you use. Body language, in fact, how much does that count towards your overall communication? So body language counts for 55% of your overall communication. So that's still quite a significant number. It's just over half of your communication is your body language. That is why your body language is so important in your overall communication. It's definitely not something you want to neglect. It's definitely not something that you want to overlook. So if you want to become a better communicator, overall at work or in your personal life, you really need to think about what body language you use and try to improve on the body language gestures that you use whenever you communicate. I will be talking in an upcoming video on how to build your leadership presence, your overall leadership presence. So if you want to know when I release that video, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell as well. The first body language technique is eye contact. A lot of people are confused about eye contact. They want Want to know how long should you maintain eye contact for and where do you look to maintain good eye contact with the other person. So I'm going to break down those two things for you right now. Where do you look to maintain good eye contact with somebody? What I want you to do is imagine an inverted triangle on the other person's face. So a triangle that goes from the eyes to the nose. What you need to do is look within this triangle whenever you are trying to maintain good eye contact with somebody in a conversation. If you look outside of the triangle at another point on that person's face or over their shoulder, how do you think they're going to interpret that? They're probably going to think that you are not interested in what they're saying. This is definitely not the impression you want to give as a leader. How long should you maintain eye contact for? I recommend people to maintain eye contact about 80 to 90% of the time when that person is talking. If you have too little eye contact, if you don't look at the other person in the eye enough, they will easily think that you are disinterested in what they're saying. If you look at them too much, it creates an atmosphere that is way too intense. You're putting a lot of pressure on that person and they might walk away from that interaction with you thinking you're just a really intense or overpowering person. So you wanna find the balance between enough eye contact that will show you are interested, but not too much eye contact to make them think that you are an intense or overpowering person. The reason eye contact is so important is because it's the only way for the other person to know that you are actually listening to them, that you're actually hearing what they're saying and understanding 
what they're saying. If you've ever been in a conversation with somebody and you're talking to them, but they're on their phone, on their smartphone, scrolling through, looking at Facebook or whatever, how did that make you feel? You probably have the experience of feeling like that person wasn't listening to you, like they weren't interested in what you're, you were saying. The reason for this is because they didn't give you the eye contact that you required, that you needed in that conversation to feel that you were being listened to. So eye contact is extremely important when you wanna to convey to that person that you are listening to them, that you're interested in what they're saying, and that you want them to continue talking. Conveying all of this helps you to develop good relationships, strong relationships, and positive relationships relationships with people that you work with. And this is definitely in your interest if you are an emerging leader or an aspiring leader. You need to develop good relationships in business and good eye contact will help you do that. Let's move on to smiling. Should leaders smile? How much is too much smiling? How much is too little smiling? These are common questions that many emerging leaders have, especially if you are a female leader. I find that smiling is a tricky or a difficult topic to talk about. Uh, personally, I love smiling. I smile all of the time and sometimes I feel I smile a little bit too much. What I found with smiling is that if I smile too much, it can sometimes make me look like a pushover or make me look weak, depending on the situation. Not always, but depending on the situation. If I don't smile enough, it can make me look too serious or even angry sometimes. So smiling is a tricky one. You really need to find a good balance between smiling enough, but not smiling too much. And this really does depend on your personality as well. Is your personality, do you have the personality of somebody who smiles a lot? Like I do, or is it your natural personality to not smile as much? And this does differ, I have found, from culture to culture. Some cultures, people smile a lot. Some cultures, people don't smile as much. So what I'm going to advise you in this part of the video definitely does depend on your personality, on the culture that you are from as well. The thing with leaders, what most, the image that most leaders want to portray is that they are serious, that they are credible and that they are approachable as well. That's a really important part of being a good leader. So you wanna know how to smile enough, but not too much. Now, how do you do this? As I mentioned, it does depend on many factors, but for a basic rule of thumb, if you are happy about something, smile. If you have received some good news, smile. If you're excited about a project that you're working on, smile about it. If you are angry, don't smile. A lot of people make this mistake. They try to cover up their feelings, try to cover up the fact that they're angry with a smile but it's not the same smile that you would get if you were genuinely happy. So don't smile when you're angry. Same with when you're nervous. Don't smile when you're nervous to cover up or to mask your feelings of being nervous. In those situations or in any situation really, be honest with your feelings. If you're happy, smile. If you're angry, don't smile. It's really just about being honest and about being transparent. And those things are incredibly important in leadership as well. People want to know and they need to know what you think and how you feel. So try to be more honest with your feelings and this will be reflected in the amount that you smile or the amount that you don't smile. Now, I know I didn't give you a concrete answer there when it comes to smiling, but I hope I did give you some guidance on what you can work towards. Let's move on to nodding. Now, nodding is a fantastic gesture to indicate interest and engagement when someone's talking to you. It tells the other person, I hear what you're saying, I'm listening to you. I'm registering what you're saying and it encourages them to keep talking. Showing people that you're listening to them, especially as a leader, is incredibly important. So when you truly listen to people, it makes them feel important, it makes them feel appreciated. And as a leader, this is how you want other people to feel. You need to make other people feel this and you do this by listening to them, by showing that you're listening to them and nodding 
when they're talking helps you achieve this. But you need to nod at appropriate times. Like smiling, you don't wanna do it too much because it can give off the wrong message. So when should you nod? How often should you nod? Let's talk about that now. When you are holding eye contact with someone, when they're talking, you're looking at them because you wanna show you're listening, nod two to three times every few seconds when they're talking. If you feel that this is too much for you though, if you feel it doesn't really match with your personality or the culture or what you are used to doing, then of course you can tone down the amount of nodding that you do. If that person is talking about a serious topic, something you need to carefully listen to, maybe their personal problems or an issue at work. Nodding slowly in this instance will help you convey a good amount of interest and show that you're listening to that person. If they're talking about something that's really exciting, that's really happy, then you can nod fast to show that you're excited and that you're listening to them too. So alternate between nodding slow when it's appropriate and nodding fast when that is appropriate in your conversations. I will be doing a future video on this channel very soon on listening how to be a better listener. If you want to know when I release that video, then make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell too. Next is the handshake. Now, before you write in the comments, well, Kara, we don't shake hands anymore. So why are you giving us advice on handshakes? I'm giving you this advice because handshakes have been around for such a long time and I am hoping after everything has settled down handshakes will become a part of our normal everyday working life or business life again so this advice that I give you is for when you can shake hands but I will be giving you some tips on some alternatives if you cannot shake hands right now there are three things that are important when you're shaking somebody's hand the first thing is you need a good grip so it should be strong enough, but not too strong. Definitely not too weak. So you need to find the right balance there. If you give a handshake that is too strong, it can easily make you appear that you're overpowering. If you give a handshake that is too weak, it can make you look like you lack confidence in yourself. So you need to find the middle ground for a good strength of a handshake. The second thing that you need to think about is web to web contact. Now the web of your hand is this part of your hand. So this part of your hand should connect with that part of the other person's hand when you're shaking their hand. You must have this web to web contact. That is another thing that makes for a good handshake. The third thing that you need to do is to shake or move your hand up and down two to three times. No less and no more. If you do it less, then it can make you look like you don't really care about meeting that person. If you do it too many times, it can make you look over eager and a little bit too intense. Always combine a handshake with a smile. That's another situation where you should use a smile. It helps you create a positive impression and it helps you tell that other person you are happy about meeting them. Handshakes are often the only physical contact we have with other business people, so make the most of it. Now, let's move on to some alternative to shaking hands. And one thing I like to do when I can't shake hands with somebody is use a combination of three things. So the first thing I do is I wave, put my hand up and I wave to that other person. The second thing that I do is I give them a nod like a head nod. This I actually got from Japan. When I was living in Japan, you know, people would often give a slight bow, uh, which often results in a slight head nod if it's in a more casual context. So the head nod I found even in Western cultures is really helpful to convey, uh, indicate to the other person that you are acknowledging their presence. And the third thing that I do is to smile. So again, another situation where smiling is really important and it does help you convey that positive impression. I also combine it with verbal cues, things that I actually say to that person. Since you can't have that body language or nonverbal communication contact that you would normally have when you shake hands with someone, it's important to convey and express this verbally. So what I say is things like, it's great to meet you, Sally, or it is so good to see you again, Bob. These are simple verbal cues that you can use to convey to the other person you're really happy about meeting them. And if you don't like the suggestions that I just shared with you, you can of course use the elbow bump. This isn't something that I like doing. It feels awkward for me. I don't really like it. It doesn't match with my personality style, but if it works for you, go for it.
If you have any other questions about body language gestures, something I didn't cover in this video, or maybe something I did talk about, but you still have a question about it, let me know in the comments below. I would be very happy to answer your question. I will be doing a future video on how to build a standout leadership presence for 2022. I think it's definitely something you will be interested in and you'll really love to learn about. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell too, so you can be notified when I release that video. Thank you so much for watching.